Hi, I was going to demonstrate real quick here how my uh, automatic on-off system works for my <coughs> large combustion engine. It should be ap applicable to anyone trying to do uh, on-off control for a steam boiler or things like that. As you can see here, we have to use some Project Red integration components. I've got um, two battery buffers on this device. Right now I have this one empty because I'm getting it, trying to get it to drain a little bit. And on the back here, you can see there's a, a second battery buffer. And as this one goes down, you can see that the redstone signal coming off of it is starting to go up. So this one uh, measures the storage of the whole device, and it measures it inverted. So as the, the amount of EU stored within the batteries goes down, you can see it's already starting to get a little bit uh, more power on the redstone. Eventually what will happen is it will come up over to here and then hit this side of the latch, the set side. And the way an RS latch works is if nothing is coming in, like right now, it just holds whatever it had before. Um, but then as soon as one of the sides here, as soon as this side gets set, it will connect this over to here and turn this side on. And that will uh, turn on the large combustion engine. Now as the large combustion engine charges up, normally what happens is the second battery pack here would start charging up over time as well. So what would happen is it would start filling up and this uh, battery energy detection cover here would read the battery and it would report back the, uh, the strength as it goes up. Um, right now it's just reporting, I don't know, whatever, whatever that is. Um, but as the, uh, as the strength goes up, on the signal as this gets more and more full, eventually the redstone power will, will push through here and come up onto this side and eventually trip this side of the, the RS latch, the reset side, and then this right here will shut off and so the large combustion engine will then shut off. It has a, uh, you can't see it from here, but when I built this, before I put this top engine intake casing on, I put down a uh, a machine controller cover. Maybe we can uh, take a look at that real quick. Yeah, you can see here the machine controller cover is just right there. Um, let me see, I need to get some space here. So you can see the machine uh, controller cover there. We can put the casing on top of it, and the way Redstone works, it'll actually pass the signal that comes out of here through uh, this machine engine intake casing and to the machine control controller cover on the bottom. So we're about halfway through. So I've got a bunch of stuff running right now to try to try to use up some of this uh, this energy. I don't know if there's anything else I can really throw in. Cause a lot of EU to use up. Uh, yeah, this thing here is just <laughs> filling up too fast. All right, let's see if we can make some room in here to kick on again. I got too much crap. <laughs> yeah, I stockpiled a lot of salt that I mined from a salt mine. Anyways, the uh, as it gets further and further up, you'll see that it's, it's getting closer to the, to the set side. I've got this little lever here that I can turn on and off manually to, to turn it on earlier. You can see it's almost, it's almost there. So it should be getting here in a little bit. And then it'll kick on. So, yeah, let's see. So I've got a couple of the large uh, chemical reactors there drawing some power too, so it should be pretty quick here. Yeah, you can see it going down pretty fast. But once it gets up to here, it'll kick this on, turn on the large combustion engine, and then I'll put the batteries back in and you can see it fill up over time as well. There, it just kicked on. So you can see here it kicked on, it hit the reset button, or the set button, I guess, on the RS latch, turns this output on, and now the combustion engine is running. And what will happen is, as long as it's making more EU than it's being used, this battery pack down here should start charging up again. It's going to take a little bit to warm up, though, so that's... Yeah, 
that's almost up to full efficiency. So it should start charging. <laughs> Maybe I'm drawing more power than it has. Um, anyways, what will happen over time is this will start charging up. reaches the high efficiency it should start going up yeah well anyways what will happen is this will start putting out power and it'll go through here and charge up the battery packs I'll go ahead and dump these back into here and what you'll see is that as the power comes out of these into this guy back down here this will slowly draw this back down again and you can see here that because uh, of the the batteries I put in there the redstone power here on this side is now almost up to here but it's actually going to go back because it's going to charge those last two and once these guys are uh, fully charged again then this side here will will extend out and they'll hit the reset latch so you can do this with only two um, energy detector covers but what are with only one energy detector cover on one battery buffer but if you do it that way, what you end up having to do is you have to put a an inverter on one side of it. So normally what I would do is I put an inverter on this side and so uh, and one energy detector cover and that way when the signal comes to here it gets inverted and then that would uh, do the, the set to enable it. As you can see right now the RS latch is not getting any redstone but it's keeping the previous value and it'll keep holding on to that as long as it uh, doesn't get reset. I don't know if this is gonna, it's gonna take a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and shut off some of these operations here to make them go a little bit faster. Yeah, that's probably not that long. This is probably gonna be the long one. Yeah, that, yeah this will stop here in a, in a minute. Stop the thermal centrifuge because that's taking up a lot of current. So, anyways, let's see if we can get this to happen. Oh, the other thing was the autoclave. Oh, yeah, it's already done. those are all full again and you can see these are actually starting to charge here and uh, as these are charging up you'll see that this uh, this signal is going to get closer and closer to the shutoff point I think it's around like 9.6 for the next there it is so it's already almost there so you can see one advantage of this is that with if you wait for the full 16 uh, Lapatron's the drain is that it runs a really long time and you don't have to pay that uh, startup penalty when we first start up the, the machine takes quite a while for it to warm up before it'll, it'll actually start putting out a decent amount of, of power it's doing well almost full so yeah, one thing you have to do is you have to make a stupid redstone line. There's other ways to do that, I'm sure, but this was just quick and easy to do. And this is actually less pollution than the four basic ones I was running before, because the four basic ones, they uh, you don't have any way to reduce their pollution when you're running them. This one, you can have put a really high tier muffler hatch on it pretty easily. And that'll uh, reduce your pollution level. Should be getting close to. Nope, oh, should be getting close to fully charged. Yep. And there it is. See, now it's at full power. It's already starting to drain back down again. So it was at full power, shut this off, and turned off a large combustion engine. And you can see it's already starting to drain again. But then it'll take it a, a quite some time to use up that 10 million EUs per 